The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we'd like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Yeah, it sounded awful weak today. We've got to go back here and look at my options, see if this thing, every time you touch something, yeah, that's that right. Every time I touch something, uh, I'll uh, put on a new monitor, which I did last night. Um, everything seems to change a bit. You never know. Anyway, uh, what do we have going on today? Uh, well, of course, the market's up. It's, uh, is that right? Huh. Go top the monitor. Up 31 points on the S&P cash. And eh, Volume was kind of light early in the day. It is a Friday, uh, 3.8 billion shares. Uh, not a lot of juice, but again, this is where uh, after you trade several years, you know that you, once you get past the first handful of days in December, the volume just continues to decrease. And there's an old saying, don't be short a quiet market. And uh, maybe today is a good example why I've had about I'm going to say 20 plus emails. I'll have to go back and count them uh, in the last, uh, well, since uh, before this morning, from midday yesterday to this morning about what stocks to short. And I guess I wasn't making it plain that I think that market's going higher through the end of the year. I think I've said that several times this week. Um, maybe not everybody's catching the show. But anytime I get everybody believing that they need to be shorting this market, uh, that generally is a, uh, is a bad thing. It's kind of the same thing when Tom gets all the calls about going long gold. Uh, that's generally like at a top. I get a lot of, a lot of, a lot of emails about uh, calls asking about when to short stuff. Generally, a good indication the market's going to go a little bit higher before it goes lower. So... Uh, I was clear. <laughs> I don't think I was clear. <laughs> Apparently, I wasn't clear because everybody keeps asking me which stocks to short. I I don't know what was wrong. I'm going to say it plainly here. Things can change, but my guess is that we're going to kind of you know that today was probably the last big day up at a one percent. We're probably going to have a lot of three tenths, half a percent, kind of nickel and diming up to the end of the year. Now, options, I th I had a hard time thinking that options were telling the truth at 3,200 for expiration on, on uh, the 20th. But, you know, we're only 52 points away from it on the S&P cash. It's a lot closer than I thought. Uh, the only thing we have to really uh, derail the market between now and Christmas, it looks like, uh, would be the Fed uh, deciding that it wants to go... Uh, commit suicide on national TV next Wednesday. Other than that, I don't see a lot. Um, I could get into the political stuff of it, um, which a lot of people email me about too. It's all theater. And no matter what everybody says, my guess is this all goes away uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. And we won't hear any more about it, and that will be the end of it. Uh, and then we'll get right back into politicking for uh, the election in the end of, uh, almost end of 2020. But uh, my guess is this all just goes away. Generally, when you start seeing a lot of people make stuff up, uh, as they have in the last three days, it's just literally insane uh, reporting. Uh, that doesn't have any kind of uh, actual reporter checking anything. Uh, the one guy's going to sue, probably going to win, 
uh, on an article on CNN who said he was uh, somewhere else when all you had to do was go to YouTube uh, and their own reporting to see him uh, somewhere completely different. Uh, it didn't take any effort. I could have done it in two minutes. A reporter should have done it. Uh, they won't offer a retraction. It's just silly season now. And I, like I said, my belief is this, this is all, at least the political cloud is all going away between now and Christmas. And then we'll move on to something else that uh, will be invented or uh, eh, politicians are always coming up with some reason uh, to try to scare the public with. But things are fairly good. Uh, you couldn't ask for a better jobs report than this morning. Um, I know a lot of people that are, would rather curse the dark than light a candle. In fact, I was at lunch and somebody said something about the jobs report, why I was standing in line. And this guy is screaming, saying that uh, the real unemployment rate is like 20 percent. And I'm thinking, OK, let's say that the government's lying a little bit. Maybe it's maybe it's not three, maybe it's five percent. But uh, my guess is it's not 20 percent. Um, I re reality is tough. And I think that what we're going to get is a couple of weeks where everybody's going to calm down over Christmas. They're going to see, well, earnings weren't that bad. Jobs are good. Earnings growth a little bit, not too much, about three tenths of a percent. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find out where now. You know, meteor hits, 9-11. Uh, you can always have those things. I just don't know. It's, you know, if you're forecasting, you can't forecast those things. But as a forecaster, all I can say is that more than likely, since we don't know the future, more than likely, we're going to see lighter volume. As that volume becomes lighter, it will force people to sh uh, that are short to cover. That m then makes people that are short ha uh, have to cover more because they maybe they were gotten a little bit better. And in, generally because it's so small, you know, three tenths, half a percent a day in the indexes, it just never really, it kind of kind of sneaks up on them. But uh, I'm never one of these guys that likes to get short when everybody else is talking about shorting. I do believe that the old saying of sell them while they're yelling and, and buy them while they're crying is actually the way you need to do it, uh, at least if you're trading. You know, if you bought something for some long time deal, you you know you got it. I don't understand, uh, though, the idea that when everybody's screaming about it, man, especially like when Tom gets all the uh, gold calls, you know it's the top. Uh, when no one wants to talk about it, eh, gold probably has a fairly good bottom. So, you know, the, the sentiment, uh, the amount of people talking, uh, tends to do it for me, but uh, yeah, I don't think there's a lot more to say about it. Light volume, but it's going to be that way through probably the end of the year. We're going to have a little bit of volume after the Fed next Wednesday, and then I think that's it. It's just going to be slow, frog boiling higher a little bit. I'm not looking for the, uh, you know, no 3,500 predictions here, just a little higher every day, just a little higher. We'll be back in a minute. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back. Uh, take a quick look. Still up 30 points on the S&P cash. Dow's up uh, 324. NASDAQ's up 85. Uh, Russell's up uh, 18. And again, I uh, had some emails. I'm just saying that seasonality is very tough uh, to get through. I uh, got a... Uh, Okay, Dave, you're the true master of calling tops and bottoms. What do you see in reading the tape? It's seasonality. I think that you can, if you want to put a lot into what goes on um, now, I, I don't think you can. Again, there's a, you know, you got into the end of the year. If you haven't sold by now, are you going to sell? I, I don't think so. You need a real impotence if you're long uh, to sell before next year. There is a lot like 1999 where people just waited until 2000 to sell, but there was a huge tax change. We still may get the, that, a lot of people changing. Uh, we certainly have a lot of sector rotation going on. Uh, but to me, by February, we're going to have Apple pushing 5G phones. That's probably going to hold up the tech sector for a little bit. Like I said, we're going to have to have something come out of the out of the blue that we do not see today, or at least I don't see today. Um, and of course, uh, you know, it matters when it matters. You can have bad news uh, a great deal and market ignores it. And then eventually the market doesn't ignore bad news anymore. It all goes down on bad news. But right now, uh, fairly decent news. Uh, and if the market can't go down on Thursday morning when everybody said the end is nigh uh, politically, that's telling you something. It's telling you that the market is probably right, and the people that are yelling and screaming the end of the world are probably wrong. So just, just a thought. Uh, the market is almost always right. Uh, people are almost uh, – well, they can be wrong. Let me put it that way. So eh, do what you want to. I just don't see, you know, I could say to a lot of people, since I'm getting a lot of emails on the subject, you don't have to, if you, if you don't, if you don't, can't be long, which I can understand. You, no position is a position. If you just can't stand it, if you can't sleep, it's not worth it. 
But I don't see the point of being short right now. I'll just say that again, since I'm getting so many emails on the subject. Of course, you can always email me at path at tfnn.com. Now, uh, I had a bunch of questions, uh, which we're going to take a look at um, uh, after I did my little uh, deal uh, earlier uh, on a uh, company, a tech company, someone asked me to explain a little bit more about machine learning and why uh, NVIDIA cards uh, are kind of necessary. Um, as, well, you know, you don't have a lot of volume in these things here. Uh, NVIDIA may, well, we talked about it a little bit, NVIDIA, uh, AMD, uh, these companies are really kind of getting extremely competitive with each other, uh, cutting prices for Christmas. So, you know, it is a market of stocks, not really a stock market. So I could see some weakness in some of these. The SMHs, though, actually had a fairly decent washout. Uh, and I'll kind of bounce around in this thing. But, you know, you've had a couple of very good uh, reversal signals Um you know, let me zoom in on this one. Uh, this goes back to the 23rd of October. You had kind of a nice abandoned uh, 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 baby down here, the pop the next day, and then the market just continued went going higher in the semis. I was wrong on that part of it. Um, now we've got kind of the same thing just a few days ago. You had this huge gap down on the 3rd. And what did it do the next day? It filled the gap exactly, and it's gone back up. So, I mean, those are fairly decent reversal signals. And, of course, trying to buy it at 127.92 might have been tough. Um, we were trying to get back into some long positions in the Tech Insider, which are doing fairly well today. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you look at this, it's very tough to say uh, that that isn't a fairly decent reversal signal. You had a little bit more volume but it was ignored the next day. And when that that kind of reversal will tell you a great deal. Anyway, back to NVIDIA, NVDA. Um, you can sell, or at least NVIDIA pretty much, sells video cards uh, for people playing games and uh, machine learning. And a lot of the money that they've made over the last few years has been in machine learning. Um, I've told the story before, but in 20, I think it was 2010, uh, they had a uh, some kind of PhD mathematician guy think that, you know what, these video cards actually do uh, processing that would be very good for scientific, uh, uh, certain scientific kind of problems. And when you really look and if you, other than putting video out that you can hook to a monitor, uh, the actual hardware that does the grinding, the engine inside all of these things, uh, is uh, something that multiplies arrays. Uh, if you've uh, ever seen somebody sort mail, uh, there's a lot of boxes uh, in the X and Y direction. Uh, and of course, they just uh, put it in their own little cubby hole. Uh, but the what these things actually do, the the grunt part that actually makes video games perform the way they do is able to make a lot of calculations, but fairly simple calculations. So what you want to think about uh, in NVIDIA uh, cards for machine learning is that they can take what's made for the video and use it uh, like having, um, you know, maybe 2,000, maybe 2,500 the new video card I'm getting from NVIDIA this next week will have the kind of the equivalent of 2,500 calculators. Now that would, in certain problems where you can calculate something that doesn't uh, basically uh, depend on something else, right? A lot of times uh, if you add things, you've got to add this first and then add this second and the order. But in video games, you're just, it doesn't really matter which order. You're trying to figure out what color uh, and what brightness to set a particular pixel on the screen is. They work extremely well. Uh, NVIDIA calls these CUDA cores. There's actually uh, a real uh, uh, meaning to CUDA, C-U-D-A. Uh, but uh, this guy in 2010 said, you know what? 
if I wrote this library, it would make excellent sense that I could use this for a lot of the other scientific math stuff that I'm doing. And that led to companies uh, uh, that were really kind of in uh, educational institutions using some of those scientific uh, libraries to uh, parallel all the problems. Anyway, machine learning really started to come along in about 2012. A lot of these things just started to come together. But the way you should think about it is that these just give you maybe not one massive kind of uh, machine, but 2,500 in my case, 2,500 smaller machines, but for the problems they're working on, it's just perfect. Um, so uh, machine learning really depends on a lot of small calculations that don't depend on others. We'll be back after a The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And, of course, uh, I was trying to answer kind of why NVIDIA is so good on machine learning. Um, they wrote this library. They were the first. Uh, AMD really hasn't ever come along with anything. It may be because of the way the hardware is built. Uh, no one's ever been able to actually say, but I don't know of anybody using AMD cards for it. Um, Amazon, Intel, handful of other people have made uh, products in this sector, at least the hardware, uh, but nothing that comes close so far to the NVIDIA product. Now, NVIDIA 
has made uh, a little kind of $100 board uh, that it's selling. Uh, the, the, the most use that NVIDIA cards get uh, is what's called learning. And that is where you take all the data and you try to make uh, your algorithm figure it out with machine learning. So you spend a lot of time and effort collecting data, doing all this stuff, and then you make a, a kind of a model or a formula. Uh, in fact, what machine learning really does is kind of, it is a program that writes a program based on the input data. So in NVIDIA, what they've done is uh, really uh, spend a lot of time uh, learning a lot of stuff that the post office needs, like uh, reading uh, envelopes and letters and that kind of stuff. That's where you have to use the very expensive boards. They've made this $100 board uh, that will run a lot of the stuff the post office uses, and they're going to be replacing. They've got a big contract to replace all that stuff. So NVIDIA is kind of looking at this as a two-edged uh, uh, business, and that is, um, in fact, that's the word that they use, the edge. And that's where the kind of the, where the rubber meets the road. There's a lot of stuff where you need to have a computer scientist or a data scientist and a computer programmer and some other people figure it all out. But once you figure it out, you know, like how people write all that stuff, um, it doesn't take near the kind of horsepower to actually implement it. And uh, they, call those, uh, they call those kind of edge uh, applications. And that would be you spend a lot of time figuring out how everybody writes letters uh, and numbers, excuse me, and letters and addresses. Uh, you get that all done, but then you can implement it in less expensive hardware. So NVIDIA's got this nice contract with post office, uh, but I guess if I want to sum it up, if you can break your problem down and do it um, uh, where it's not based on everything that comes before it, Machine learning uh, with NVIDIA cards makes parallelizing, i.e. being able to do all the different stuff uh, at the same time instead of waiting until something's done to do the next operation. That's kind of like sequential. But if you can parallelize it, you can uh, parallelize it. Uh, you can actually make it quick. I probably spent too much time on this, but uh, I did want to get to this part of it. Um, and again, it's uh, it's a big business. and a big part of both AMD and NVIDIA. Uh, I mean, the video card part of it. AMD's more on it. Now, AMD's made a lot of good uh, uh, hay, and I was kind of a uh, thinking that it would be very problematic for AMD to continue on. I just couldn't see what Intel was doing. Uh, but we'll talk about uh, Intel and what happened last week with Tom O'Brien today at 10, at uh, 3.30. Uh, but... Um, I joke a lot about dropping the chalupa. Uh, a lot of times you just don't do something and you, you miss the boat. Sometimes you just do something horribly wrong. And we'll talk about what Intel did that was horribly wrong to stick a thumb in uh, the eyes of some people that they shouldn't have last week that is uh, going to probably carry on for a while. Uh, no real, uh, uh, I guess, uh, real belief. Uh, I have not been very happy with Intel since its new CEO. And I continue to think this thing's probably trapped between 50 bucks and 60 bucks for a while, but it may even have a tougher time next year. We'll discuss that next, uh, next hour with Tom O'Brien. Okay. Uh, questions, questions, questions on Amazon. Uh, again, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, do, 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 okay. Do, 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 eh. Again, um, ever since the earnings call came out on Amazon, I don't think anything's changed, and that is that they're going to continue to, to spend a lot of money. The other side of it is the lack of growth. Uh, in these big web services companies, uh, you do have a, a kind of a continuing trend here of higher lows in Amazon. Uh, I don't think that that breaks before Christmas. 
but at the same time, it's kind of hard for me to say that they didn't have a good or won't have a good Christmas, at least in the retail space. But again, uh, retail margins, uh, 5 to 10 percent for Amazon. Uh, the web services business, about 50 percent margins. Uh, and I think uh, for what uh, most people on Wall Street are going to look at, it's that web services part of the business that they're really interested in. Okay. Question about Microsoft. Uh, again, Microsoft's uh, been a little bit better uh, than the rest. They're not completely stuck on uh, web services for high margin products. They're still making a lot of uh, that. But I think they've done a lot better in the last, I'm going to say six months to nine months from taking a lot of people that would normally put their software on something like Amazon Web Services and move it to Microsoft. A lot of this uh, has been um, making uh, their uh, operating system and some of the other software available uh, open source uh, and free of charge. They charge more for like tool and tooling to write software for big groups. But if you're an individual like me, I'm going to think if there's anything I had to buy from Microsoft in the last few years. There were years when I, I would buy $2,500 subscription to write software uh, for their tooling. Uh, I haven't had to do that since 2015. So, again, uh, big outfits, uh, they'll buy a lot of specialized software and tooling for working in groups. Uh, and that's really where Microsoft's making its big money. If you're a... A uh, company that has uh, 10,000 employees, uh, more than likely you're probably using Microsoft stuff, uh, and you're probably not using Linux, and you're probably not using Amazon Web Services. You're probably working on that kind of stuff in, uh, in Microsoft. Uh, now, the question came, is this a double repo pattern? And the answer is, it's set up like one. What you now have to have is a fairly decent close below the three by three. My guess is that you do not get it uh, short of, again, some kind of cataclysmic, uh, unthinkable um, event like a 9-11 or uh, a war starting or something else that no one else has told, called and told me about. Um, yeah, that's about it. Anyway, we'll be back in a, in a, uh, uh, yeah, it, we'll talk about that when we come back, but. Yeah, Intel hasn't been able to do much yet, or as, uh, nor has uh, AMD. We'll be back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Uh, I had somebody complaining about uh, their speed of the Internet being uh, not good enough. And, uh, you know, I actually talked to some guy that's in the middle of nowhere. He's got a gigabit uh, Internet out in the middle of nowhere. It really depends on where you're at. But uh, I'm going to say I was talking to my engineer earlier and I was saying, hey, I got a new monitor. In fact, I'm going to talk to Tom about that because there was a time where everybody had those big, giant boat anchor CRTs. And then, of course, uh, everybody went to uh, having LCD screens. Uh, there's really kind of the next wave coming, and it really hit uh, over the last, I'm going to say, seven to ten days. We'll talk to Tom O'Brien about that. But uh, monitors, uh, they be changing yet again. Um not so much that you would look at, but uh, basically in their uh, capability, uh, at least for computers. Uh, but, you know, you go to Walmart or Target, uh, can you even find a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, a 1080 HD monitor? I think I saw one, maybe one at both places, but they're all at least uh, 2K monitors, if not 4K monitors now. Um, I didn't see anything. I was in there, I think it was on Friday night or Saturday night, going waiting to see a movie, and it was a Target right across the street. So I walked over to the Target, got a thing, wandered through there. I didn't. They didn't have hardly anything. But uh, that's kind of those televisions are all kind of low margin things. Uh, but uh, the real big reason I'll be bringing that up is AMD and NVIDIA because, again, for these new kind of monitors, you need vi new video cards. But uh, yeah, we'll talk more about that next hour. Uh, of course, uh, got some more emails coming in. And a uh, question about what I suspect uh, we're going to see in uh, uh, in uh, the uh, VIX. Um, I think, you, you, you know, like I said, unless the Fed decides to do something wild, it's very tough for me to see uh, the VIX going above maybe 16 before the end of the year. Uh, we'd need some kind of really huge surprise. Uh, at 18 is actually where you start seeing some real big movements in the market. Uh, but right now, I suspect that you could see uh, with lighter volume and lighter volatility throughout the end of the year, eh, I think the VIX could pull back to 12 or under by the end of the year. So there's not that much room under what we're doing now, but the, I don't think that there's a compelling case to think that the VIX is going to go up. Um, I wrote to somebody about the uh, transportation index, uh, and I said that it made a very good-looking low uh, in the market. Uh, one gap down, and, of course, it moved back up. But that huge... Uh, rollout to 187.97 on December 3rd um, was actually a washout in the market. Um, and one of the reasons I was able to go long 
let's go ahead and get this this week, uh, is I saw a lot of these uh, sectors having a washout. I think the IYT was one of them. So let's, uh, let me see if I can't get this up and where you can see it. Uh, da, 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 da. Is it, uh, da, 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 da. where is it at? I got 20 or 30 of them, so it takes me a couple of seconds to find it. There it is, Dow Transports. Okay, let's get this over here. Where, uh, now where's it at? Okay, there we go. I had to generate it. Um, my sector oscillators that I put in the uh, market every day uh, give you a good indication when the stocks are, are massively oversold. And you were getting, this is generally the way it works. We've got the IYT up at the top and my sector oscillators at the bottom. Normally when you get down to the low, that's about it. But we are already seeing uh, pretty much a washout on the third uh, in the IYT. And it wasn't much different than that with the SMHs. So let's take a look at it. Uh, basically, you just kind of get to the low, give it a couple of two, three, four days. And you're that's when I, on Tuesday I was saying that you are more than likely going to have a fairly decent low into the market because uh, I think it was that uh, semis. There we go. Let's go ahead and pull this up too. Um, pretty much the same thing. And hard uh, highs are kind of hard this year to, to get right. But uh, with this tool that I've developed, um, with the help, a little bit of help with uh, uh, Basil. So I want to thank him for uh, taking a look at it and giving me a lot of feedback at, uh, at uh, this. Once you get to these lows, uh, like I'm, I'm putting my mouse over it now, in fact, let's zoom in here. When you get down to these lows, and this thing is uh, about as far as it can get down uh, in these, you're going to probably have a fairly decent bounce, if not uh, uh, a long, uh, medium to long-term low in the market. And by long-term, I mean like two months. So generally, you get the washout. That is, everybody that's going to sell is selling. You also get everybody that wants to go short the market. Another good uh, sign. And then the market just goes higher. And it, does it do it all the time? No. But when I get a market that does that, and I also get my sector oscillator to say that this thing is every single stock is on a sell uh, in that sector, it is a generally fairly decent time to actually buy. And you may, you may miss it by a day. I bought one stock and I was like a day early on it. Uh, but um, you know what? Mm, everything's fine today. So, uh, but I knew on Tuesday that I was pretty much within about a 24 hour range uh, a day that we were gonna have that major low in it. And this has worked for 20 years. I've gone back with the data. Um, and again, like I said earlier in the show, buy them while they're crying, sell them while they're yelling. But uh, that's it. Okay, what else do we have here? Uh, da, 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 da. When you go to the movie theater and lessons you use on time, uh, you're probably looking at a uh, true K picture. Okay. Okay, we're still flat. Uh, well, no, excuse me, it's still flat. We're still at uh, 30 points uh, higher on the S&P cash. Dow's up. Uh, let me update this just to make sure. Yeah, uh, up uh, 338 points on the Dow. Nasdaq's up 89 and Russell's up uh, 19. So we had another question out here. Um on oil. Let's take a quick look at Gush. And of course, that split just recently. Oh, we'll be back in a minute. But uh, I wanted to get this in before the end of the day. We do have the Baker Hughes numbers uh, out for crude, and they continue to be rather bullish for oil. We'll get back to those in a minute.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and a tech insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Did want to get into uh, crude just a little bit. We normally bring up uh, the Baker Hughes numbers rig counts, which is probably the best way to figure out what's going on in that, because uh, they're not putting up rigs or turning them on unless they think they can turn a profit. They may run them a little bit longer uh, at a loss, thinking that the market will turn around for them. Uh, and eventually, they'll close down the ones that aren't making the money. Uh, but today, we got the Baker Hughes rig count that's down three in the United States to 799. That's off about 1,000 uh, from about 16 months ago. Uh, they continue to shut down ones that don't produce much. Uh, it seems like the economies to scale are really getting to U.S. Uh, uh, oil rigs. Uh, Canada, a little bit different. Uh, they're up 12 to 138, so about a 10 percent bounce in that. Uh, Canada has been very aggressive at uh, putting up new wells uh, along for the uh, pipelines that are coming down through the United States uh, is offered uh, them a way to get a lot of that oil to market uh, at a price that they wouldn't have been able to do before. So even though we have a little bit of a weakness uh, in the rig count in the U.S., minus three, right, 799, to Canada's plus 12 to 138, as long as we're seeing those numbers kind of come around, uh, probably Canada's, they, they, they don't have They've got good producing wells, but probably not a thing like we have 
down here in the United States, but still adds to it. But uh, kind of net net uh, down in the U.S., uh, vastly higher in Canada. And that's generally in Canada. This is where you're starting to see the weakness uh, as they shut down a lot of them because of the weather. Uh, we may get that in the next couple of weeks, and that may, uh, if we get a few of those shut down in Canada, that may add a little bit more uh, oomph uh, to what's going on in the crude market here in the uh, U.S. In the meantime, so when you can, not when you have to, we will see you here Monday, same bat channel, same bat time, and we'll see you in about 30 minutes with Tom O'Brien. We'll be talking technology.